are you earning as much as you deserve for the time you're committing? And are you doing things that you really enjoy? And most people, if they had the money, would quit their jobs in a heartbeat. A good rule of thumb, I mean, from our standpoint is if a property is not going to generate at least a thousand dollars a month, like net cash flow after all expenses, rent, utilities, supplies, maids, everything, if it's not going to do at least that, we won't even look at it because I mean, if you're looking at short term versus long term, both have their advantages, pros and cons. But I mean, the amount of work that's involved on the short term side is considerably more than it would be with the long term tenants. So with the amount of work that you're doing and, you know, in some cases, potential risk you might be taking, you want to make sure that you're being compensated for that fairly. Right. Mm -hmm. So in our case, that's kind of our general benchmark of what we aim at before we look at taking on a deal. If it's not going to do that, we won't look at it. That, and that's a very conservative number of a thousand dollars. So that's our minimum benchmark. Yeah. And that's the average, like you said, of oh, over the 12 months, but we want to make sure we're at least making that. But in some cases we've seen upwards of five to six, even to 8,000 net cash flow um, per month on one property. That's spectacular. Yeah. I think our net cash flow position after it's all said and done, will end up being somewhere around, you know, $1,250 per month, but living in the house is seven and a half to eight months of the year. So it, yep. it's phenomenal for us too. We do have dramatic differences in seasons, $10,000 a month in high season, you know, $5,000 a month in low season, and we're staying at it during low season. Yep. And ultimately, I think these numbers really do make for some deeper thought because while a thousand may be the minimum that you're searching for is sort of your prerequisite, you, you're you know, that's 2x what most long term investors are looking for that I work with, including myself, I'm usually looking at that $500 minimum net cash flow position on a long term rental property before I'm even willing to consider it. And the lower the price tag at that level, the better as far as the cash flow being twice as strong. Yes, it does require considerably more work. But it's a lot less money to get into though, isn't it? I mean, if we're talking about say a $150,000 purchase price on a, on a long-term rental property, we're dealing with 20% down or $30,000 plus 3% in closing costs or another 4,500 bucks. So we, we're out $3,500 without having to put a cent into any of the up, uh, upgrades, maintenance on the house just to earn $500 a month. So how much would you estimate, just a really rough guess on averages, out-of-pocket expense to land each one of these doors? If you were to just sort of give me a, a, a guess, give me a range. Yeah, I would say, so when we just started on the rental arbitrage route, what we did was first month's rent, damage deposit and lease agreement and furnishings, but yeah. it was actually a partially furnished uh, property. So we only needed to put, I think about 1500 and just kind of throw some pillows and some artwork just to make it, you know, fill to the, to the max, I guess. And so I think our first property, we put in about $4,000, yeah. um, you know, just for the damage deposit and some furnishings. And um, that one we've had, we're coming up on our third signing on it and it cash flows like a beast between like minimum a thousand dollars. And it's, the rent is only a thousand dollars on it as well. And on the high season, we've made between 4,000 um, and up on it uh, with yeah. that. It's in a really hot location and does uh, very well. So let's be conservative about, about this hypothetical. So if we're looking at $150,000 purchase price in this, in this example, yeah. and it's a $35,000 out of pocket, assuming the, the property's perfect, it's completely rent ready. Mm -hmm. And I'm pulling $500 a month in positive cash flow out of it. Yeah, it didn't take as much work, but I could do eight of those or seven of those according yeah. to a $5,000. You know, if, you, if we round up from four to five, that's yeah. seven times the number of properties and you're getting, so you would pull 7K out of that per month under a worst case scenario versus me who's, who's you know, settling for a measly 500 bucks um, for the same out of pocket costs. And yeah, it took you a lot more work, but for me to have to do seven, you know, I, I mean, think of, the, I would have to do 14 of those properties, right? To hit, <laughs> to hit. Uh, so I would have to put in twice as much work. I would have to come up with 35,000 on every single one of those 14 properties. I think the trade-off is well worth it, right? I mean, people are already busy during the day. The question becomes, are you earning as much as you deserve for the time you're committing? And are you doing things that you really enjoy? And most people, if they had the money, would quit their jobs in a heartbeat. So, you know, I love the idea of being in the hospitality business, even though it's not always easy with every guest. Yeah. One of the most 
fulfilling things about being in short-term rentals is the review, is that positive experience somebody had and seeing all of these these various ways that you thought about how somebody would enjoy themselves if you did A, B, and C. And then it turns out they did. And they talk, talk about it online. You're like, wow, this actually worked, right? So I do think that even though there is a lot more work involved, the trade-off is just so obvious to me compared to long-term landlording, which everybody calls po- you know, po- passive, which is such a joke. It's not passive at all. <laughs> no, no. passive For me, at least. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. It's funny you mentioned that about the review, though, because we've had, like I said earlier, we've had some incredible guests. So as you were saying that, I just brought one to mind. So again, in the basement suite of our own home, we do have, uh, we run it as a short-term rental. And we had um, this tech CEO come and stay with us. And his review was something along the lines of, you know, I've stayed in some of the most exquisite, expensive hotels in the world with thousands of dollars a night. You and know, penthouses. And <laughs> but this basement suite has <laughs> hands down beats the tar out of anything I've ever stayed in. And I I'm just <laughs> I'm like, wow. Yeah. And I mean, it has, it has a five star rating and it's yeah. a beautiful basement suite, but it is a basement suite. Penthouse <laughs> <laughs> or basement? Let me think. Hey, you guys yeah. must be doing something right. Like I said, it's those, don't forget those Q-tips. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's really cool. So guys, just to really quickly recap for our audience, I just kind of want to go through our list because I've been jotting down here what, what we wanted to talk about. So the reasons that we agreeably love short-term rentals is number one and always foremost, cash flow, right? Because that's going to give us our financial freedom. We're able to own, we're able to, to actually make money on these properties without owning them. We don't have to put forth all of this extra money. We just talked about getting seven times the amount of cash flow or 14 yeah. times the amount of cash flow based on, you know, the same amount of money. That to me is incredible. We also have uh, that you can be anywhere in the world. You can run these things remotely. I think being yeah. able to travel freely, uh, whether that be to your local soccer field to watch your kids game or whether it be to Europe, the choice is yours, right? So that that type of freedom is amazing. And then obviously being able to grow it to whatever level you want, scalability being very important to me, whether you want to be small, you want just a few thousand bucks, or whether you want to be big and you want hundreds of thousands per month, this is completely achievable at any level. Why we don't like these short-term rentals, there are times where we scratch our heads and say, were we crazy to do this in the first place? Obviously, sometimes we get those bad apples, very low numbers. I've only had two at this point, um, and, uh, and, and you know, we got through both of them pretty much unscathed. So a lot of what we were worrying about during, during their stay didn't end up really being as big of a deal as I was making it out to be in my head. Low barriers of entry, that's both good and bad. Obviously, yep. it makes for a more competitive market. You better come in ready to step up your game. Number three, we see that this is an ever-changing industry. A lot more ordinances, regulations, restrictions, both cities, counties, states, and HOAs. They're trying to figure this all out at the same time. You are, so just be prepared for agility, adaptation, be ready to move and and adjust as necessary, which is any business, by the way. And then finally, fourth and final on why we don't always love short-term rentals is because of the earnings being volatile and it's a little bit harder to plan and prepare. Sometimes people come into business ownership with the same W-2 mindset that they had before where they earn a consistent paycheck every time. That's just not how it works when you're a business owner. So you got to be prepared for planning, for budgeting, using averages, accurate and conservative. If you're conservatively accurate, projections, all of this stuff is very important. Guys, make sure that you email Michael and Katrina if you'd like to start your own Airbnb business without having to come up with 20% down payments, oftentimes without having to rely on on your credit so it doesn't matter if it's bad guys this is a really unique and revolutionary way to be in the industry of short-term rentals and take it from people who have already passed a million dollars of earnings in just two years in the business two of the nicest people that i work with send an email bnb bootcamp at vipfinancialeducation.com that's in the description below put a name and and a phone number in the email so that they can get a hold of you and that's a no pressure consultation to find out what your objectives are and see if you're a right fit for it. All right, guys, thank you again. As always, I can't tell you how much we always appreciate you. Thank you for being here on the channel and sharing this great information with our audience. They love you too. We've had nothing but great feedback from everybody. So we do appreciate it. And uh, we'll bring you back on for some more great content. Thank you so much, Matt. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Always, guys. Thank you too. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.